So once you have decided what social justice issue is really important to you as an individual, um, whether it be hunger, whether it be immigration rights, whether it be rights to housing, whether you want to talk about gentrification, whether you want to talk about police brutality, whether you want to talk about voting rights. Um, the next step is to figure out if you want to portray in the portrait that you work on for this project, someone who is either a victim of that issue, someone who has suffered because of that issue, and or someone who has stood up against that issue. And when you figure out who that person is, I suggest that you go and Google um, their name and try to find an image that is a good representation of that. Whenever I'm looking for an image for a portrait, I always look for something that has a lot of contrast. So as you can see, um, there's just so much light in this side of Dr. MLK's face. And then there's also all these shadows. The lightness next to the darkness always makes for a really good painting, regardless of how simple the pose may be. And so I chose this image and the program that I have opened up right now is called Photoshop. And I'm just gonna walk you through the steps of getting the colors and the values in the image very simplified so that you can then um, very easily turn it into a painting with the next steps of the process that I'll show you in a second or probably in the next video. So um, I have an image that I got off of Google. I wasn't able to just save the image because I guess copyright issues. So whenever you run into that, you can always take a screenshot. If you have an Apple, it's Command Shift 3. If you want to select, so I was able to select specifically what I wanted, um, which was his image versus my entire computer screen. And in order to do that, you do Command Shift 4, and then you can actually, um, I'll show you. Command Shift 4 allows you to select which part of the screen you want, and then it'll take a picture like that. So that's just a heads up. If you're not using an Apple, I'm not sure how to take it on a PC, but you can also just take a picture. If you have a phone that does that screenshots, you can take an image off the internet, take a screenshot, and then email it to yourself. I'm gonna show you how to edit the picture in Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, I will also show you a second way to do it using just a, um, an app that you can, can get for free on your phone. So I would go to file, well actually I would go to image first, adjustments, levels. Levels is great because then you get to play with the values. So you can make the image very, very bright. You can make the shadows much darker, more dramatic. Um, you can also mess with the middle tones. I usually don't do too much of the middle tones. I usually keep that there and I'll make the, the lights lighter and I'll make the darks darker. And you'll see why. Again, I'm trying to make sure that I end up with a great painting composition, right? So you don't need too much of the middle tones. We want to make sure that it looks like the figure that I'm trying to portray, in this case, Dr. MLK. And we also want to make sure that it's an interesting painting, right? So usually a little, a little bit of contrast is great. A lot of contrast is also great. And then, um, just making sure that, you know, the colors are simplified. We already, I'm already working with the black and white image, so it's already super simplified, but even with the black and white image, I wanna make sure that the values are simplified as well. So the next thing that I would do is also an image, also an adjustments, and then I would click on, well, I'll show you two things you can do. One is threshold, which does like an extreme black and white, which actually might be fun for this project. Maybe we'll, we will use this one. 
So you see how it completely, completely simplified the image to just black and white? That's one thing you can do. Um, if you're ever not happy with what you do, you can always go to edit, step backwards to go back. Then I would also try this, adjustments and posterize. Posterize is nice because it breaks it into a few values and you can actually choose. So this box up here says levels and I could say I wanted to have seven levels. And you see how there's a few more um, values of gray and white and black. I could say, let's see, 10 levels. Now it's like super, super grainy, but I could also go ahead and say five. And now you see it's broken it into like a black, a dark gray, a lighter gray, and then a really light gray, and then the white is still there. Um, let's see what four looks like. Four is nice, a little bit more simple. Black, dark gray, light gray, and white. Let's see what three looks like. Uh, I actually like three a lot. So you decide how many levels. The more levels you have, the more intricate, and again, if I put it down to two levels, this is what it would look like. The more levels you have, the more intricate of a uh, drawing you're gonna end up with in the end. So you have to just decide, you know, how much work do you really wanna put in? How long do you wanna be working on this piece? Do you have a lot of time? On a huge wall, it might look nice if you have more values. On something that's small, just a couple of values will do the trick. Because again, as long as we achieve the likeness of the individual, then I think that the painting is successful. So once you have this, the next step would be to trace it, and I'll talk about that in the next video. For the next step of the process, you'll need a piece of tracing paper, um, masking tape, and at least a pencil or a pen or a marker will do. Um, this is something that I discovered while teaching in a uh, prison institution that I work at where we rarely have like good enough lighting to trace. Actually, we never have good enough lighting to trace. And so we started using the television screen as a light box. And so whenever we want to trace something, well, usually it would be an image and then, and then the tracing paper on top. But in this case, since we can pull the image up on the screen, maybe you can pull it up on an iPad, um, or a computer or a television if you don't have access to a printer. So you can just skip the printout stage because I actually do have a printout of the image right here. But for those of us who don't have access to a printer, you can actually just take a piece of tracing paper and put it up on any screen that you have access to in your home. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trace every shape and every value. So what does that mean? I'm gonna trace everything that's black I'm going to trace everything that's this dark, gray, this dark gray, and I'm going to trace everything that's white. And when I'm done, I'll have all the different values that are in his face. As you can see, I have traced everything. Um, it's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be. The more you focus on the shapes and the different values, the more accurate the image will come out. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take the tracing paper down and transfer the image onto regular paper with my transfer paper.